In the process of designing an earthen dam, there are several factors to take into account. One of the key considerations is the possible failure modes of the dam so that we can design against them. The first and most important failure mode to avoid is overtopping. This is when water level is higher than the dam itself and water flows over it. This is prevented by conducting detailed research of the past flood water levels and possible future flood levels. This way we can ensure the dam will not fail in overtopping. Piping. This is when water seeps through the dam and erodes away the downstream side. This will continue to erode away the material, walking its way back up through the dam, eventually creating a pipe for the water to, full fl to freely flow through it. Sliding. This occurs when the horizontal force created by the water pushes the outer dam over its foundation. Slope instability. If the slope on the downstream or upstream side is too severe, this can call a failure of the face of the dam and cause an overall failure of the dam itself. On maps.ie, we found the lowest elevation of the bank around Thomond Village to be 1 metre high. We also found the critical flood level from the FSU web portal to be 3.9 metres. This level was obtained from the 2009 floods. Therefore, our dam has to be a minimum of 2.9 metres to prevent overtopping. For a homogeneous clay, we found the slope stability of a dam under 15 metres high to be a ratio of 2 to 1 on the downstream slope and 2.5 to 1 for the upstream slope. Before building any dam, we had to dig a trial pit at the borrow site. At this trial pit, we conducted different tests and also took soil samples to take back to the lab with us. One of the tests that we conducted on site was the shear vein test. This was done to determine the shear strength of the soil. We found the soil that was 2.6 meters below ground level to be the best soil for our dam. This was called the pink clay. This is the layer of soil we will build our dam with, as if we build it with this soil, it will be homogeneous. The first test which we undertook was the sieve analysis. This allowed us to classify the types of soil which we found when we dug our child bit. It tells us what percentage of the soil types, gravel, sand and silt are present, while also calculating the uniformity of the soil. Next was the Atterberg limits test. As our soil is above the A line and past 50 on the liquid limit, we can assume that there is a high plasticity, therefore there is a significant amount of clay present. Shear strength is one of the other factors which can be calculated using the Atterberg limit. As our dam will have slope size, it is important that they will resist shear and not allow sliding to occur. Next was the CBR or California bearing ratio test, which is used to assess the strength of the soil type. This is important as we attempt to assess which subgrade layer we feel will be best suitable to build our dam on. The Proctor test is used to calculate the max dry density of soil in relation to its moisture content. This helps to allow contractors to specify soil compaction rate of the soil. We can see from our results that the max dry density was about 2.05 grams per centimeter cubed at a moisture content of 12%. Before we get to compaction, we must first examine the lab results further. After our modified proctor test, we were given a set of results which reflected our expected max dry density on site, simulating modern compaction methods better than the standard proctor. From our graph, we can create a suitability range by getting 95% of the max dry density. This gives the contractor leeway when compacting, staying within the upper and lower bound moisture content limits. There are five S's when it comes to compaction. Strength, stability, settlement, swelling, and seepage. Our objective is to densify the soil 
We can illustrate this by simplifying each material into three block forms. By mechanical application, we can reduce the air voids through compaction. Once we find our ideal build site, we can begin excavation of our topsoil and subsequent layers till the impermeable layer can be reached. This is similar to our barrow site material. From our site investigation, we know that the maximum expected flood level is 3.9 meters above the usual water level. Our barrow site material is then laid uniformly at a depth of 200 to 300 millimeters and then compacted by the means of a sheep's foot roller. This is done until desired compaction is achieved. Tests that help verify quality control is maintained are the sand replacement test, which is done off-site, or the nuclear density meter, which requires special training to test. Under dry weather conditions, water sprinklers may be used to maintain moisture content, or conversely, in wet weather, operation must cease until the soil is dry. The sheep's foot design also makes the layers locked together. This reduces the likelihood for seepage. So for our dam design, this is the flow net. So we went to um, floodlevel.ie and got the maximum flood level, which is 2.9. So the delta H will be three meters between both the um, water levels on the down downstream and upstream. Um, we added a filter, um, which is very important because it draws the ferratic surface, which is the, st uh, the top line of the flow net. Um, down and away from downstream slope. The filter must prevent erosion of the dam soil and must not become clogged in the process. It also um, must have sufficient discharge capacity to remove seepage quickly without inducing high seepage forces or hydrostatic pressure. For the filter, this is the focal point which is very important because we get the distance from the focal point to point C right there. And that distance then is that line, which is called the uh, drift tricks. And um, that line is very important because it then um, gets us those points along the uh, ferratic surface. Um, and then we join them to get the, the first flow line in the flow net. Uh, and then all the rest of the flow lines just follow the shape of that ferratic surface. So flow nets are consists of um, flow lines and equal potential lines. The flow lines uh, track the path that a water molecule will travel. This is why um, flow lines can't intersect as water molecules can't be at two spots at a time. Equal potential lines represent zones of equal pressure or head uh, and the main fundamentals of flow nets is that every intersection between a flow line and equipotential line must be at right angle to each other also we draw the flow net so we can form uh, circular squares um, as you can see Seepage through the dam can be calculated by the following formula. Permeability times change in total head times number of flow changes divided by the number of drops. After we did this, we calculated the seepage to be 56 litres per year. In the northern dam, piping may occur due to boiling. The factor of safety of piping due to boiling is I critical divided by I max. Critical hydraulic gradient is calculated by dividing the squared unit weight of soil by the unit weight of water. The maximum hydraulic gradient is found in the smallest square in the flow net, usually found in near the exit of the dam. It is found by dividing the drop in head across the square by the height of the square. The factor of safety of piping due to boiling in our dam is 3.37. The factor of safety should be at least three in autumn dams.